What if journaling didn't have to be another burden on your ever-growing to-do list? What if everything that happened to you across the week, the highs and lows, was captured in the moment, and all you had to do at the end of the week was reflect for a few minutes? If you've tried journaling methods that force you to do it first thing in the morning and it hasn't worked, this is the perfect journal for you. My Notion journal is built on a BSE, simple bullet points, and listing out the highs and lows of the week. It's dead simple with no stringent rules and tons of flexibility. And my favorite part is you do not need to squeeze it into your daily routine. So let's dive in and take a closer look at my weekly reflection journal in Notion. Hey guys, my name is Irfan. I've struggled with building a habit of journaling for the longest time, but I've pinpointed three reasons why, and maybe you can relate to these reasons as well. The first is perfectionism, and I know that's a false premise, but I don't like seeing a blank entry or a blank sheet in my journal. It's this anxious feeling of incompleteness. Now the five minute journal is an awesome way to start journaling. And I love that you only need five minutes, but I don't like that it forces you to a schedule. In the morning, you set your intentions and in the evening you reflect back, which makes sense. But if you get busy in the morning or you forget at night, you can't have a full entry. And that really annoys me because it makes me give up on journaling and I've given up on the five minute journal many times and I pick it up, but I'm not consistent with it because I know that there'll be times where I get busy at night or in the morning and I can't have a full entry. The second reason I've struggled with journaling is the format. So blank sheets or structured prompts. I think blank sheets are too scary for most people. Structured prompts give you the false hope that it'll make journaling easier for you, but I think actually prompts make it harder. I think it makes it a rigid rule that you have to answer these specific prompts. I also think prompts get pretty stale after a while. And the third and probably the biggest reason why I've struggled with journaling is making it into a productivity exercise. And maybe you can relate to this, but I've added like my weekly reset or my weekly review into my weekly reflection and it becomes way too complicated. I don't need to have task management with my weekly reflection. And I did a Notion video where I was inspired by the five minute journal. So I created a template which tracked your metrics, had prompts and it combined task management and weekly reset. It's a cool idea if you can stick with it, but my new approach is more based on simplicity and sustainability. I wanna make this a easy, low effort and that means removing anything to do with task management in my weekly reflection. And this gets rid of any sort of work you have to do on Sunday night. I used to spend about 45 minutes doing like a weekly reflection and weekly reset and setting my agenda for the next week. And I don't wanna do that on Sunday nights anymore. I wanna have a stress-free Sunday where I don't have to worry about task management. I also don't think it's smart to wait until the end of the week to think about what you've accomplished or to reflect back. There were so many times on Sunday nights where I was thinking about what I did on Monday or the feeling I had on Monday or Tuesday and what I accomplished and I don't remember what I did or how I felt when I completed those tasks. So I've split up my weekly reflection from any sort of like weekly reset or weekly review. Anything to do with task management is now Monday mornings for me. And I can talk through what I do there in another video if you wanna see that. All right, now it's time to jump into my weekly reflection journal in Notion, do a quick walkthrough and talk about how I've solved some of the issues I've talked about. Okay, so this is my weekly reflection journal in Notion. If you want the template, it's in the description below, but it's super simple to create. It only takes a few minutes. Now. Now, I use this for my weekly reflection, as I mentioned, but I also use it for yearly reviews as well as some feature planning. So this is filtered by the year and that's a weekly reflection. Okay, and I use what, what's called a tag database. So I try to make sure that everything is tagged so then I can quickly filter through it. So you'll see here the entry itself is just the week number. So there are 52 weeks in the year. I just like name, numbering them by the week. I don't like to theme the week or put down which week it was. I like to keep it super simple. And I like to use a emoji here that's just like kind of a color for the month. So I know this was in January, this was in February, this is in, this is in March. And then this create date here, this property that can be auto automatically created is just when I actually created the entry. And this will just tell me which Monday it was because I always create these on Mondays. And then we have best highlight and I'll talk about this once I go through the actual template itself. And then we have tags and then last updated. And then I just have a remind, which is just, I'll put an at, and then I'll put a reminder for myself. If I wanna like just go back to that specific week to look at something happened that I wanna jump, jump back to and see progress I've made or something where I wanna just remind myself. Let's just go into week one from this year and I'll open it up. Okay, so this is week one. You can see I have a, a link to my values and principles to live by. I think this is important to have as you're thinking about your life to have, have some principles and values and 
This will probably change, but I like to refer to this and take a look at it just to know I'm kind of like following my values. It's a little corny, but uh, it works for me. I also have a checklist here, weekly plan. So just kind of what I do on Mondays when I'm actually resetting for the week, but I don't really look at this on Sundays and it doesn't really pertain to my weekly reflection. And so in terms of directions on how to do this journaling, again, super simple, but list out the highs and lows of the week, forget about what day they happen and forget about structure. And then in terms of the type of thoughts when you're putting things down in your journal, I think sometimes it's good to have some idea of what you're writing down. I mean, it could be it could be anything, but emotions I think are really important, positive, negative emotions, progress on things. So if you made progress on a project or something like that, write it down. Good things happen to you, bad things happen to you, write those things down, praise, hurt feelings. I think all those things are really good for introspection to think about your life and, and how things have affected you. I think we have a negative bias when it comes to how we feel about how things are going. So it's really good to jot down those things that are progress. There are two columns here and I really like to not make this full width. I think it just looks nicer that way. So I have highs and lows of the week. Now the cool thing is, and this is why I don't like super structure is I don't break this down by the, the day just because there'll be some days where I'll get busy and I won't write things down or I just can't think of anything that happened that day. Totally fine. And I just like to bullet point things as they happen. And I like to favorite the week and put it always at the top under my favorites bar. So it's always there. And the thing is, you don't need to do this every single day. You don't need to do it in the morning or the evening. But what you do need to do is, and I think this is really important, is when these things happen, when you feel these emotions, when progress is made, when you have those wins, to write them down immediately rather than waiting and procrastinating on them. So just write them down when they come up. When you think of those things and you're like, yes, I, I got that done, or man, this week sucks, write it down. So again, it makes it so much easier rather than waiting until the end of the week. So you can see some of the things I've written down here. And these are just bullet points, but this is this was week one, so I was experimenting with this, but by week nine and week eight, I was just writing a lot more things down and it'll just change depending on how busy you are and the thoughts you have. And this is just the perfect amount of structure, having highs and lows. That's enough for me to start journaling and, and writing things down that are happening in my life. And you can see here, I highlighted the high from week one. So Better Human published my article and Better Human is a publication on Medium. So they published my article. That was a big win for me. So I, I bolded that bullet point and I put it in my best highlights. Now I'm a big fan of gratitude when it actually happens, when some positive thing happens in your life, you write it down versus like forced gratitude where you're answering questions and thinking of, of things that you're, you're grateful for. Um, that's fine and all. I just find that to be a little bit too much. So I like to just like, when I think about gratitude, think about actual things that happen that are positive and kind of like, smell the roses and, and think about those things. So for me, like you could see like, hey, I tested negative for COVID. That's a small thing, but it's a win. So I think about not only like the big wins, but the small wins and the small things end up, end up being the big things in life. So as you can see, I've been doing this for nine weeks now and it's working really well. I definitely recommend trying something like this if you haven't journaled or you've given up on journaling. I think you can keep it super simple, make it a small lift and this will be great to have at the end of the year. Uh, and I'm already kind of building up all these highlights. I've ob obviously uh, blurred some of these out because they're personal, but they're really nice to look at in sort of a, a macro view of the year. Cause we're already nine weeks into the year. It's crazy. If you like simple databases that have just a few properties and are easy to maintain, check out my personal knowledge management database.